So the Mind Story Code is a map of how a body-mind-soul system like you or me evolves and how a collective group of people evolve as well. In this episode, we'll explore what it is, where it came from, and most importantly, how to use it for personal and global transformation. Hi, I'm Carla Rieger, and this is the Golden Age Timeline Podcast. So the concept of a mind story appears in both the fiction book Heliotropus and the non-fiction book Mind Story Inner Coach, and many people have asked me to talk more about it. In the fantasy novel Heliotropus, it's an important aspect of everyday life in this utopian-like inner earth city. But I'd also like to propose that the theory could be very helpful in our everyday lives too. And that's why we base a lot of our work at the Mind Story Coaching Academy on this code using the Mind Story Method coaching tools in everything we do. So in the story Heliotropus, the Mind Story Code is like an operating system for humanity that gets upgraded as time goes by, like you might upgrade your laptop OS. Every 10,000 to 25,000 years or so, the code upgrades to help humans evolve. The code is in story form, as that is how the mind organizes how it views the world. Part of the process of evolution is to identify the stories that you're living by, and then choose which to keep and which to discard. So you're not just the user of your own biocomputer, your own consciousness technology, but you're also the technician. There are some theories that the Earth was a more highly evolved place, in earlier times than it is now, and we lived by more empowering stories at that time. Then came the age of inversion, where the duality of dark and light became intensified, and things that appeared one way were actually the opposite. Different groups of people also share the same mind story code, but some are ubiquitous, meaning they are common in all people's societies' races. A mind story has an actual mass, but at an energetic level existing in the body-mind-soul system. A mind story includes images, sounds, archetypal characters, plots, themes, motivations, and so on, like what you'd find in a novel or a screenplay. It's a series of instruction sets that are far more complex than a simple long-term memory. For example, the difference between a mind story and a long-term memory is when we tell ourselves what an experience means about us, about life and what we can expect in the future. When we do that, a mind story forms and becomes encrypted as a holographic package of information in the neural networks of our brains, operating long term as a way of filtering the experiences of our lives. It's that phenomenon where two people can have the same external experience, but come up with a completely different explanation as to what it means. I'm sure you've noticed that not only with worldwide experiences like what we've gone through over the last few years, but also within a family, say when someone dies or there's a big stressor that affects everyone. Some people react in similar ways, but some people react in very different ways. And it's usually the mind story they operate under. Now there are small mind stories within individuals and large mind stories within groups. The individual ones are where your mind takes a snapshot of an experience you've had, especially if it was an intense one. For example, very happy or very unhappy experiences tend to stay in the long-term memory and some form a mind story, meaning they give your mind instructions on how to react or behave in similar situations, how to filter the experiences of life moving forward. For example, I remember my first time swimming in a lake in the summer with my cousins. It was beautiful weather. We were having lazy days of just being with the surrounding nature. I was about eight years old. It was a very happy memory. The smell of the fresh lake, the water lilies, the dragonflies skipping across the surface, the sun beaming down, throwing the ball around, having a swim race with my cousins, diving under the water, seeing the fish. In my case, that was a mind story versus a long-term memory, because after that, I associated swimming in lakes with a feeling of happiness, feeling invigorated, great friendship, fun, 
beauty, serenity. Other people might have had a different experience swimming in that lake and associated it with other less positive feelings. I decided what it meant for me and so recreated that experience throughout my life. Many wonderful experiences swimming in lakes, even if the circumstances were less than ideal, I still think lake swimming, good, happy, positive. So you can probably remember something like this from your childhood that was happy and it went on to be a positive mind story. Let's take the opposite. I was about seven years old and I got attacked by a Doberman Pinscher dog. He bit me. I was bloodied and bruised until I could get away by climbing up the monkey bars and the dog stayed at the bottom barking at me until his owner came home like an hour later. The dog lived in a large mansion across the street and somehow the dog got out when the owner was away and the dog was trained to attack. So he attacked me and my friend as the only humans hanging around that day nearby. That's a mind story for me because I made a decision about Doberman Pinscher dogs or dogs like that trained as guard dogs. To me, even if they look like that and are not trained as guard dogs, but are good natured in my subconscious mind story, they're still dangerous. I got anxious even as an adult. So it became a phobia. I had to work hard to get over my fear of those kinds of dogs. And people have all kinds of phobias, like of heights, water, spiders, mice, driving, clowns, elevators, the marketplace, or even things that seem strange to most people. Like I once met someone who had a phobia of the color yellow, also known as xanthophobia. Or there's a new common phobia, especially amongst teenagers, called nomophobia, which is the fear of being without your cell phone. So personal mind stories created from positive memories might seem to you or others as preferences, passions, strong interests. And mind stories created from negative memories might seem to you or others as aversions, dislikes, or phobias. But you can have positive or negative memories that don't become a mind story because you don't make a decision about what that means in your life, about what that means about certain external situations or what that means about you in certain situations. Your mind remains open and flexible to similar situations having different meanings. So as you can see, strongly embedded mind stories can work for you or against you depending on the results they create in your life. The good news is that you can change mind stories. For example, people who have a lot of inner peace or are very creative or who easily attract success in their lives, say with money or relationship, probably have a mind story that says those things come easy to me. So think about that for yourself. What aspects of life come easy to you when maybe they don't come easy to other people? Now, this doesn't mean you have to be perfect in that area or thing, but there are likely instruction sets in your subconscious that allows you that success. I've had a group of women friends for many years and saw them go through many phases of life. One woman always had lots of career and financial success, but not as much success in love. Another woman had great relationships, but never had much career or financial success. A third woman was a brilliant artist, but felt lacking in terms of good health and so on. It's almost always the mind stories. When you get down to the core of it, you might call those kinds of things personality traits or aptitudes, but I say it's something deeper that gets formed often when we are children Some people say these mind stories are even passed down through generations or even from other lives. At any rate, they exist and learning how to have more choice, agency, and power over these mind stories seems to make a huge difference to having a more empowering, free, and fulfilling life. So let's look at it from the perspective of large group mind stories from maybe an entire race of humans because we are also controlled by large group mind stories or what's been called egregores or they might also be called cultural biases or societal norms but again are these empowering or disempowering do you have to live your whole life by them or can you break free and make a different choice 
a few generations ago, people often were born and raised in the same place and never traveled around the world, getting to know other cultures. It's different now with air travel, where people make a decision to live a different way because of experiencing other cultures. Before that, most people would never question the expectations of their society or culture because they had nothing to compare it to. Of course, the internet has also allowed that cross-pollination of ideas and mind stories. In the novel Heliotropus, the age of inversion started about 15,000 years ago, and that's when the mind stories people lived by became more disempowering. Instead of being self-generated, those stories were fed to people subconsciously by a malevolent artificial intelligence known as Sim. At the meta level, you could say this was to challenge the soul to grow through contrast. It was like being given a heavier weight to lift to get more fit at the gym. <laughs> It became like a house of mirrors, walking down all these false pathways, false mind stories that led to something opposite of what they sought. And that challenged people to grow in a way they never had before, like the mind stories that were supposed to lead to health and wellness led to disease and suffering. The mind stories that were supposed to lead to prosperity and freedom led to poverty and enslavement. The mind stories that were supposed to lead to spiritual connection and community often led to disassociation and disconnection. As you go through the maze and have all these experiences, you become wiser. You realize the game at play, you see the bigger picture, and this earns your way out of it. It's like passing the test by learning to become a master of your destiny, the creator of your own mind stories instead of the victim of them. Also in the story, the code is something the main characters must study and absorb into their collective mindset in order to earn the upgraded and new mind story operating system, one that allows them to ascend to a higher level of consciousness as a group. A holographic image of a mind story is a spiral that looks like a double helix strand of like DNA. And there are five core pillars of the story that are like a typical story structure with five parts. Within each of the five parts are five strengths or aptitudes that a person must master because sometimes the strength can become one's greatest weakness. The five times five equals a total of 25 base Tavis aptitudes. Each stage or aptitude has its dark and light side, at least in the mind story OS active through the age of inversion. The theory is that we're at the end of the age of inversion and going back to the age of congruence, the age of unification. So the collective mind story operating system is about to change to move out of duality, whereby the dark and light side merge and create a new separate third entity. So the next mind story code OS integrates the light and dark side of the 25 aptitudes and we seem like superheroes to our previous selves with aptitudes we didn't even know were possible. In other words, the new Mind Story Code integrates the duality of 3D and 4D and fuses it into one double helix forming a new trinity of understanding where Sim and Sana or artificial and organic or inversion and congruence merge to create a new possibility of living in a higher dimension of existence that would seem like a utopia to us, but is everyday life to those already there. So I think imagining a world where humanity is thriving, prosperous, healthy, wise, connected, helps bring it about. And that's a big reason I write both fiction and nonfiction. Our imaginations are what help bring new possibilities into existence. Now, some people think that a thriving, healthy, prosperous world would be boring. <laughs> of course, there would be challenges, but without so much of the deck stacked against us. So while the Mind Story Code exists as a possibility in the fictional world of Heliotropus for the purpose of entertainment, it could also be seen as a big picture map of where we might be going. That said, let's go back to everyday life in this third dimensional dualistic reality we live in now. How can we use this information in a simple, straightforward, easy, practical way to create breakthroughs in our lives? And that's where the various coaching processes we have at Mind Story Coaching Academy come in handy. 
like the five-step Avara model in the book Mind Story Inner Coach, which you can get for free right now if you look in the show notes for the link or go to mindstoryacademy.com backslash book dash free. You can find an example of how the Avara model works for someone I coached in episode 21 of the Golden Age Timeline podcast, which is all about the Avara model. She wanted to write a book and kept procrastinating about it. The Avara model helped her break free and now the book has helped her build huge credibility in her niche as an expert, helping her get speaking engagements and clients while also being another source of passive revenue. She's also turned that book into an online course, which is another source of passive revenue for her. People often come to coaches like me saying, please help me build my business, help me with the marketing, using speaking or a book or an online course or through a better system for reaching out to clients and customers. What's different with me is I don't just focus on strategy as a coach. That's part of it because I've been an entrepreneur for over 20 years, but I help them with the inner work because even the most successful people have at least one disempowering mind story stopping them that they often aren't even aware of. So I help them identify and eliminate the disempowering mind story with a much more empowering one. With other coaching systems or styles out there, they may have found forward movement, but that's often because they're using willpower alone, which works for a while. But if they haven't dealt with the core subconscious programming, they just revert back to their old ways as soon as the coaching ends or as soon as their willpower peters out. What we do at Mind Story Coaching Academy is change a pattern, a core pattern of procrastination or self-doubt or fears forever so they don't get stuck like that ever again. They can keep coaching if they enjoy it, but they don't need that constant accountability to achieve their dreams. It just goes on autopilot and naturally unfolds in a synchronistic, almost magical way. The struggle is gone. The pushing and fighting with yourself is gone. The path to effortless, joyful, creative fulfillment of your life purpose is there before you, finally, and you don't ever look back. So the point of using the mind story code personally is to evolve yourself to the point of learning how to be your own mind story creator instead of just the consumer or the victim of someone or something else embedding a mind story in your subconscious that you may not want. Or sometimes you embed your own bad mind story just by the meaning you gave a situation. If you create a different mind story, I would go so far as to say you create a new timeline for your life, which ultimately affects not only your personal life, but humanity's future because we're all an aspect of the whole. So many people ask me, how did you come up with this? <laughs> the whole My Story method actually came out of combining all the coaching tools that I created and that which my partner Dave O'Connor created with both of us coaching people for over 20 years. And I brought a more feminine style to it and he brought a more masculine style to it. And we found when we combined them, they were even more powerful. I'd been an expert in story, storytelling, narrative counseling for a long time, and he used a unique process of accessing the subconscious. And stories access the subconscious in a way that didactic or conceptual types of communication just don't. Concepts speak to the logical linear mind and only get retained in the short-term memory, whereas stories speak to the creative, imaginative mind to get retained in the long-term memory. For any coaching to stick, you really need both the linear and creative minds working together. So if you want more resources, you can get the Mind Story Inner Coach book for free for a limited time by going to mindstoryacademy.com backslash book dash free or see the link in the show notes. It will take you through the five step of our model on any area of life where you're in doubt, confusion, overwhelm, or any kind of fear or anxiety going on especially around growing your business, but you can actually use it for any area of life. It takes about 15 minutes to use the Avara model. You just write down an issue and work through the steps. 
On the other side, you'll have a clarity, confidence, calm, and ease about the situation that will let you take constructive action moving forward to get the results you want. Along with the PDF download of the book, you also get samples of two free audios that go with the book called Neuro Blueprints that take the material deeper. Now, if you'd like a Kindle or paperback version of the book, you'll see a link to get those on Amazon on that page. Also, I'm making room in my schedule for a few more private coaching clients. It feels like the time is right and I love doing it. I've helped thousands of people with the mind story method and even trained other coaches to use it. I mostly work with entrepreneurs, business owners, or people in career transition wanting to build or start a business. You get customized help with me once a week for three months. You get deep insight into what's going to get you from where you are now to where you want to go an action plan, and the ongoing accountability to get you there. So if you have had doubt, confusion, overwhelm, or just plain frustration that a certain important goal is not happening or not as quickly as you want, let's do this. Let's roll our sleeves up together and make it happen so you can really see results quickly. Usually I'm helping people unleash a much greater potential within themselves so they can create a profitable business that also feels fulfilling and on purpose and makes a huge difference for others with all the supports in place that they need. It's really about creating a life and a lifestyle that you love. Look in the show notes for the link or just go to the coaching tab at mindstoryacademy.com. Of course, some people like to explore concepts like the mind story code in story form. To check out the novel Heliotropus, go to goldenagetimeline.com backslash book. It's won four book awards and consistently professional reviewers and regular readers say, I couldn't put it down. It's a page turner about a woman who discovers her ancestors come from a subterranean city of geneticists from another world here to save humanity from extinction. So if you like fantasy, sci-fi, or thrilling adventure novels, do check it out at goldenagetimeline.com or find it on Amazon. Now to hear about more episodes or offers like this, go to goldenagetimeline.com backslash podcast, or just go to the podcast tab and sign up on our e-list. So that's it for today. I hope it was useful. Do hit like and share as that helps others find it. Until next time, thank you so much for listening.